Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Ryan Ford. Welcome to episode number two of my Q&A where you post up questions in the comments below and each week or so I will answer a new one. This week we've got one from Eric Rubin and it didn't receive the most likes on YouTube but I think it's super important which is why I chose to answer it today. He wrote, let's say you want to do stuff like big precisions and strides on concrete. What are some good physical benchmarks you can set for yourself to deal with this impact? And when we're talking about this answer to this question, we're talking about three things. So first off, we've got mobility, strength, and technique. And you must have all three of these things in order to do parkour safely for the short term and the long term. Take myself for example. I was always pretty uh, good about my technique. I had good landings. I wasn't reckless about my training. I also had good strength. I came from a football and a weightlifting background. I had been doing deadlifts and squats for a while before I started parkour. What got me and what is kind of like the silent killer that I call of parkour is mobility. And what I mean by that is I have very tight Achilles and ankles. And when you lack the flexibility and mobility there, the first place it compensates is your knee. So after five years of doing parkour, I actually developed bad runner's knee in my left knee and I had to get surgery. So consider all three of these things. We're gonna start off with technique. And I won't spend too much time on that because that's what tutorials are for. Um, learn how to squat correctly, learn how to land correctly. Uh, pay attention to things like tracking your knees relatively over your toes, keeping your lumbar curve, um, not heel striking when you land, things like that. I'm not going to spend too much time there, we'll go right to strength. Um, two main exercises that we want to pay attention to, deadlift and squat. Now what you want to be shooting for for a max one rep weighted deadlift is about two times your body weight and for squat we're talking one 0.75 times your body weight. So again, that's a one rep max of weighted deadlift weighted squat. So if you weigh 150 pounds, we're talking 300 pound one rep max deadlift. I know it sounds like a lot, but there's a lot of Russian coaches and people all over the world, respectable strength and condition coaches who say you shouldn't do any plyometric training unless you can squat twice your body weight. I think that's a really extreme example, but these are some good numbers to shoot for at first. And Go beyond them. The more strength you have, the better. What we're going to get into lastly is mobility. And I consider this, again, kind of like the silent killer of parkour. A lot of people don't even know that they are lacking this area. And it's going to result in knee problems five years down the road. So what you want to shoot for for mobility, first off, is a good third world squat. You may have heard of this as the hunter-gatherer squat, caveman squat. The kids at our gym call it the frog sit. And what I mean is a full squat, ass to ankles on the ground, feet flat while maintaining good posture as well. Now the ultimate parkour test of this is to move your feet from hip width to feet together, knees together, and if you can still stay flat footed in a full squat, then you've got really great ankle Achilles, hip mobility, and also in your back. This is going to apply to good landings. Um, a lot of the best jumpers and landers for precisions and things like that. Uh, locally, we're talking like Christian Green, Dylan Baker, Brandon Douglas. They have great third world squats. I have not tested these people, but I would also assume people like Max Henry, Kai Willis, Phil Doyle, Danny Albaca. These people who have great precision jumps probably have great biomechanics and flexibility and mobility in this position. Once you've addressed this issue, I would also recommend working on getting a good pistol and a good shrimp squat. These are two great body weight leg exercises that also address your flexibility and mobility issues in your ankles and your hips. So all these things put together make up good physical benchmarks that you can use to do big things like strides and uh, drops and landings and jumps on hard surfaces. Address them all. Address your weaknesses. I think that's about all I got today. Again, post up your questions in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.